happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad to do it. Jose Candelas raises the flag as it unfurls from Saragossa's tallest structure, the flagpole in front of his new grocery store. The Candelas family grocery opened this week just for the one-year anniversary of the tornado that took away the family business and most of the town that supported it. Some man comes this way, they disappear. I don't see no more. The shelves are bare. Jose says he can't afford to stock them. This is the store. Jose keeps a scrapbook on the counter to show visitors what happened to the town a year ago. Jose Candelas and the other survivors of Saragossa don't need a scrapbook to remind them of what happened here. They can look outside their newly built homes and still see the scars on the ground and in their minds. I remember everything. It's my trouble. 30 people died. 170 others were injured when the tornado came from the mountains and leveled Saragossa as flat as the cotton fields surrounding it. I call that night of the black moon because it uh, really was dark and uh, painful. Everybody cry. There is one cry in particular that Jose cannot forget. While searching the rubble for his own family, in a moment of panic, he ignored the cries of a young woman. She was about 10 or 14 feet into the rubble. It's a voice that somebody called me, help me in the name of God. Yeah, you okay? I'm guilty. Sometimes in the night, I don't know why, but I listen to the voice. Can still hear her. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. After all the grieving, Jose Candelas set out to rebuild his life. He applied for a small business loan. The government turned him down. They said he's too old. This is the po uh, powerful country in the world. He fight against discrimination. If I happen. So at age 67, with nothing but a wheelbarrow and a number two shovel and an ancient brick-making machine, Jose Candelas set out to rebuild his store one brick at a time. He made more than 2,000 bricks by hand. And making 2,020 bricks was hard work. Oh, yeah, sure. And I made my, all of myself. The Catholic bishop of El Paso saw this determined effort and told Jose to put away his shovel. The church would rebuild his store. So here it is, Saragossa's only business. I hope this town is going to be better than before. Saragossa is beginning to take shape. Sixty simple box-like houses were built by volunteers. The Catholic Church is nearing completion. The community center, where many of the victims died last year, has been replaced by a larger building with an underground shelter and a warning siren. You feel safer now? Yeah, a little bit safer, but not really now. To forget the thing. <laughs> this is a terrible thing. I don't want to see again. We live in insert. We don't trust the weather. You know, still know nothing. You just watch the mountains in the day. Everyone in Saragossa looks toward the mountains in fear of the next storm. There's a metal reminder of the last storm still wrapped in the tree above Mary Lou Apodaca's new home. To me, it just. Just like yesterday, I will remember that day. Of all the people that I saw dead, there was nothing I could do. This time of year, there are daily reminders of how deadly the storms from the mountain can be. Jose Candelas tries to put it all behind him. He says it would be impossible without the help Saragossa received from people all over the world. People from here, Texas, from the, all the United States, from South America, from all Europe, Africa, Asia, all the world, I can thank you. 